What's up, everybody? I'm blessed and free. Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV. So what's really big on this channel that I like to talk about is obviously the corruption in prison, but there's also a corruption before you go to prison, and that's in the criminal justice system. So I first heard about this guy, you know, a couple years ago and what he went through, through his actual father. Um, so I wanted to get in contact with him and we kind of, kind of just happened. And I think it's for a reason. So what I want him to do is be able to explain, you know, where he's from and what he went through and also what the criminal justice system did in his case. So why don't you tell these people what your name is and where you're from? My name is David Kepner, uh, from Tampa, Florida. I grew up in town of country, but I moved to Pasco County about 15 years ago and uh, started my life up there. Okay. And so uh, that's pretty much where I'm from. So before like the case that, you know, we've been discussing a little bit happened, um, you know, what in life did you go through like as a child and growing up? Like, when was the first time that, you know, you either started getting into trouble or you did you have a rough upbringing uh, if you just wanted to? I mean, yeah, I, I was, uh, you know, I don't know that I was a problem child or if I wasn't, but uh, I was considered a problem child. I had a uh, pretty uh, abusive dad who, uh, okay. who drank quite a bit. And, um, you know, I don't know if he was unhappy with his life at that time, but... You know, it seemed to affect me as a, as an adolescent coming up. So I can I can totally relate. My mom was a alcoholic growing up, and you know, at the time I didn't know if that's what was affecting me. But now that I look back, you know, when we get older, I realize a lot that that shit really affects you when you're a yeah, kid. Um, absolutely, absolutely it affected me to the point that today, as a father, I think about that all the time, and I know that I will absolutely. never be that way or. Or, or that kind of father to my kid, you know what I'm saying? And that's the one thing it does to me too. And that's probably the best thing it can do to you is make sure you never end up being like that person. Um, so when all that was going on, like with your dad and the abuse and stuff, were you getting into trouble yet at this point? I mean, at eight, nine years old, you know what I'm saying? That's when I really remember Right, the problems, right. you know what I mean, that were, uh, they were pretty persistent. And so, I mean, by the time I was 10 and 11, I was hanging out with little groups in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I would come home 11, 12, you know what I'm saying? Um, slide in there and, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> and try to, you know, you know, manipulate my way, why I came home late or whatnot. But really, you know what I mean? I just wasn't happy at the house. Now looking back on it as an adult. And, yeah. um, so you know, was that affecting you in school or? Yeah, I really had lost interest in school uh, by the time I was like 12 or 13. Um, you know, they had me in so many different, so many different classes because of my, my outbursts or whatever they were calling it at that time that, right. you know, the psychiatrist have, had convinced my mom to, to try to try drugs on me. And that's when ADHD was was starting to become relevant, you know right. what I'm saying? And um, so they convinced my mom at that time to start trying little medicines on me. And I remember waking up at school in a pool full of drool, you know what I'm saying? So looking back now as an adult, I felt like they were just medicating me, you right, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I felt like I was a normal kid, like um, a normal boy. Just shut them up and take this right. type shit, yeah. Right, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean... So I was going through that, you know, so so really I lost interest in school because I was so heavily medicated that I really didn't know what was going on. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, at that point, you know, I started hanging out in the streets and found a little group of kids that were a couple years older than me. Oh, cool, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and then it, and it went from there, you know what I mean? Started getting in trouble here and there and going to juvenile detention center and so what was the first arrest that you actually had that sent you to JDC? <laughs> first arrest was uh, we, we, we jumped the fence at the CSX railroad car and uh, we just damaged brand new cars for no reason. Just being, um, just being a kid, man. Just being it's a kid, crazy. you know what I mean? I mean, it, I guess it's just being a kid, but I mean, it's actually, I made the wrong decision at that time, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I should have been, at that age, I should should have been, you know what I mean, taught well enough to, you know, not to make that decision, but... 
Right. As a kid, you don't, you know. And I and also too, there's probably some people that are watching this that you know had a good childhood and a good mom and dad every day to come home to. I know for myself though, and I don't know, I don't want to speak for you, but you know, when you go home and your mom or dad is drunk and anything you say, like your walk on eggshells, you could get your ass beat. You know, kids do that shit, like breaking shit and, you know, being loud in school. Act be, out. Yeah, to act out because they're, we're trying to get attention, but we get it in the wrong way. And I just want to, you know, touch on that because a Absolutely. lot of people don't understand no, that. No, it is. You know what I mean? I mean, the first time me and my father got an altercation, I was, I think it was almost 16 years old. He was drunk. You know, just pushed, he, he, he. He doesn't claim to remember it the way that it happened, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but I know how it happened, yeah, you know, know what I'm saying? He pushed my head into a glass, and at that point, you know what I mean? And I lunged at and swung, and I went to the detention center for that, too. Yeah. Um, but I felt that I was going to be attacked. Yeah. Not only did my head yourself. smash the glass, I didn't know what, what, else, what was coming after that. So, I mean, just a human instinct to, to, to defend yourself at that point is, is, is what kicked in, and... So you know after, uh, so let's like kind of fast forward a little bit. So when you, from JDC, when was the first time you actually got booked into like an adult jail? Uh, probably, uh, eight, eight. A matter of fact, it was, I was 17. Um, I had got charged with, as a juvenile, I went to the detention center for 21 days and okay. they adjudicated me as an adult. And I went to the county jail, but I was in a jit pod at the jail, but I was at the jail. Um, I sat right there for... I think almost six months before they shot it back down to juvenile court and sent me to another program. So, I mean, I was I was under 18 when I went to the actual jail, but I was still with JITS. But, right. I mean. And the uh, program, what, what program did you go to? The last one I went to was PYDC. It was Polk Youth Development Center. Yeah, I've heard of that one. It's in Polk City. So, and I also talk on the channel, you know, about the JIT, you know, going to JIT camps and stuff like that. And I, and I know that's not JIT camp, but the same so time. It was pretty close. It was right by Polk City. You know yeah. what I mean? It was right by PCI. And shit was off the chain. Yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. I, I mean, I, it, to be honest with you, I've been I've been in adult prison and I and I've been to that program. That program was the wildest place I've ever been that's to. That's what everybody else. That's what I know. When I went to mine, I feel the same way. Yeah, man. there was no there was no uh No fucks given. No. <laughs> Just were grouping up, it was like packs of hyenas and you better be with a pack. Yeah. <laughs> At that age, you know it. what I'm saying? So all right, so let's talk about the case a little bit. So yeah, I know you. I know you had a case go on. You went to. I'm assuming you went to prison, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's talk about that day um, that your case happened and what you went through from that day forward until you went to prison. Huh. I know it's a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Uh, I mean, it, it, as far as that day, it was August 2015. I was out of town working. A couple buddies of mine. I was kind of going through a breakup at the time, um, a separation with my kid's mom, weren't doing good. Um, so I took a job out of town, screw it, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, ended up being able to get my buddy out there with me. Um, and a buddy of mine that I've known for 24 years. And So you uh, guys grew up together? Yeah, we grew up together, had the same name. Uh, it was just, uh, we were pretty close, man. I mean, as close as you could be Without being blood. Without being blood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty. Uh, it was a pretty cool bond at the time, and I, and I really thought something <clears> of <throat> it. But uh, we were over there working, um, hanging out, having a good time, yeah. going to Sea Breeze, down in Daytona Beach, and just working during the day, hanging out at night. You know what I'm saying? On the weekends, we were hanging out. Uh, while we were there, uh, one of our floor bosses asked us uh, about this Mason that we just went out to the parking lot after work one day and all of his stuff was out there in the parking lot. Dude named Kurt. And uh, Like got fired or? No, his girlfriend brought oh, all of his stuff she, to the job booted site. Him. Booted him. <laughs> booted him. Right At least she out. brought it to his work. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could be, uh, it, it could have been a worse situation than that, but um yeah, he did. And uh, our floor boss, he was he was a mason. Kurt was a mason. Our floor boss said, hey, man, our company was paying for our room. Um, he said, hey, man, this dude, old lady kicked him out. 
do you mind if he stays on the floor? And me and Dave were like, nah, man, we don't mind. It's whatever, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It was cool. Everything was kosher. So uh, at that point, dude moved his stuff in. He was staying on the on on, on our on our floor, and uh, it, it stayed that way for almost a month. I mean, and and he was hanging out with us. You know, there was four of us hanging out, and uh, we were all enjoying ourselves. And you know, one 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 weekend. We decided, the, the dude started talking back to his girlfriend, the one that booted him out. Well, they were still talking and shit? Yeah, and okay. she stayed about an hour away. So uh, he wanted to go visit that weekend, and he took, he, he, he got a ride over to his girlfriend's house, and um, we stayed there all weekend, hung out, party. And then on Sunday, the dude needed a ride back, and that's where, that's where it all started. And it all started from a joke. Uh, it was, it's kind of crazy. Uh... You know, a text was said, hey, can you, he texted us saying, hey, do you think you could give us a ride? Uh, we text back. Um, our company's sending us back to Tampa. We're not going to have the room anymore. Okay. Joking around because he's relying on that room, but we're joking around at that point. Making him, like just messing with him. Yeah, just yeah. joking. He's like, for real? You know what I mean? So I knew, we knew it was going to alert his attention. You right, know what right. I'm saying? And so, again, it started as a joke and then. He ended up texting our boss and finding out that we weren't, you know what I'm saying, going oh, to okay. back to Tampa. So he texts a, a smart remark back to my buddy's phone and uh, at the time. And um, a little smart comment back, a little smart comment back, and it blew up. And this started at about, I'd say, 730 you know, the texting went back and started going back and forth. So he got in his feelings and then got you guys feelings. were like trying him for real. Right. When it when it when it started as a joke, but it start it's starting to get a little bit more nasty. Yeah, until you, know you get that the the certain words you say yeah, to someone. Yeah, there's there no there's there certain words that are being thrown out that now it's becoming personal and it's becoming more of an issue. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now it's went from a joke to like you're disrespecting me type stuff. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. So at that point, it goes on for hours, man. <clears throat> um, the dude sending arm, he, he's taking uh, pictures of his arm. <laughs> he's sending them texts back. He's sending a picture of a tap out hat. Like, you like know what I mean? At, at this out. point, at this point, it's like when you get back, we're going to meet type deal. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And, and this is going on between him and my co-defendant. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and all this is via, via text. So there's a lot of text going on here. Okay. And we'll get to that later <laughs> where these, where these state's attorneys didn't want to go into these phones or didn't act like they didn't have access to these phones, but they had access to mine, but nobody else's phone got yeah. pulled at that point. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. So, but well, we'll get to that later, but um, all this messaging goes back and forth. It's like, I don't know, it's between 1.30 and 2. And the dude's on his way back. He done got a ride from a guy, another Mason that we work with that stays in the, the, the boss's room that asked us if this dude could stay okay. in our room. Him and the boss have a room, so he ends up, his name's Robert, he, he ends up going and picking this guy up and coming back. And they get back, I don't know, it's anywhere between 1.30 and 2, 2.30. Afternoon-ish. Okay. No, at night. Oh, in the, the morning. morning. Oh, okay. This is Sunday night, and we're going to work at Monday morning. Oh, okay. And it has okay. escalated so much that there's no sleep intended until this dude gets back. Right. And so, and that and that's what, that's what happened. So anyways, this guy... Goes and picks him up from Eustis, Florida, and brings him back. Uh, he pulls in the parking lot, and me and my co-defendant were sitting on the uh, on the on the back porch that faced the uh, the parking lot. Okay. So we're sitting there, and uh, as the dude pulls in, my co-defendant walks out to starts walking out to to the road. Now before that, I told him he had his shoes on; there was dew all over the ground. I'm like, bro. I, you know what I'm saying? Don't you think you're gonna you'll slip if y'all scrap here in the grass? This okay. is a this is a crucial. Thinking about it after in the case, you know, when you try to find different points in the case right. to where it it changed immediately. You know what I'm saying? That was a a, a a crucial conversation that changed this immediately because if they would have been on the grass, it would have been different. Nobody would have died. Right. Okay. I suggest they go out there so he got footing. I said, this dude's going to wrestle you. And so he had, uh, 
he was walking out to the road and the dude had Kurt walks around to the back of the uh, little SUV that Robert picked him up in and, and got a, a bag of stuff and walked it up and set it on the porch. And when he set it on the porch, my co-defendant said, hey man, you ain't staying in no more. This argument started over over that, but as the as the conversation now escalated, you're really not staying here. Right, as the conversation escalated, that got thrown in there. Hey, you, you ain't staying here on the floor no more. Blah 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 blah. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't at first. But that as the conversation <clears throat> escalated, that's what was said. So the dude turns around, sets his stuff down, kicks his flip flops off, walks out to the road. They square up. My co defendant's backing up. At this point, I'm I, I run out here. Here here's another problem in the case okay. that if this would have happened that, that that there would have been no discrepancies on the story at all um i run out there with my phone so i'm gonna record it so you're I, in the room no i was sitting on the porch okay, okay. when they all now pulled you're in. going out to where they are yeah they walked out there i'm walking out there with my phone dude clicked his flip-flops off he's walking out there i go to get my phone to record it i slide it over the bar over to record and i hit the record button Battery too low to record. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, and within 30 seconds, this was all over with. So, I can't record at that moment. Um, the dude's walking to him, had his hands down, head, you know, chin out. And my, my co-defendant was backing up, telling him, hey, man, I'm telling you, you don't want to do this, man. Stop, right. blah, blah, blah. He throws his hat and throws a right cross and hits him on the chin. And uh, he hit him on the chin, man. He's stiffened like a board. And uh, when he fell back, his 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 head snapped and and and, and snapped into the pavement. And uh, you know, I felt like my co-defendant was going to try to jump on him again. But I had already seen this dude was completely out. Like and you saw the head hit. Yeah, I knew I knew he was done. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I I ran up and I grabbed my co-defendant. I'm like, oh man, he's done. You know what I'm saying? That was it. So he takes off walking back to the room, and the dude's laying there. We're trying to get him up. Can't get him up, dude. I mean, he's out snoring, snoring, pissed his pants. Everything was crazy. <laughs> yeah Damn. yeah i mean he smacked his head pretty decent you know what i'm saying uh so so what's going through your head right then when that happened i, I it's not really anything to me i just figured it's a, it's a fight dude you guys you just watched the fight like yeah you, know he got I mean? knocked out and um <laughs> that's that is what it is you know right. what i mean it's over with all right we're gonna go back to work tomorrow no 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 harm no foul right and, now he uh, knows <laughs> keep, yeah you know what i'm saying uh didn't think anything of it had no acknowledgement of uh, anything being devastating wrong with this man. Um, but come to find out there was. Uh, but anyways, we can't get him awake. He's out there. Somebody in the, in the hotel calls the office and said, hey, man, there's a drunk guy passed out in the road. So the lady comes out. What she knew us because we'd been staying there for almost a month. She said, hey, we told her, oh, we got it. It's all right. So the guy that brought him home, Robert, that brought Kurt home, went and got some water. But before that, we decided to pick him up and take him into the grass, which was right in front of the apartment. So we did that. I picked him by the arms, he picked him by the legs. And then Robert had got some water and started dumping it on right, him. Right, to wake him up. Right. And, uh, you know, he after about five dashes, he, uh, he came to and told him, hey man, stop, you know, stop dumping water on me. And, um, so, and Robert told him that we need to get up. So, anyways, he laid back down and dude dumped more water on him. Finally, he gets up and he stumbles and he stumbles back around in a circle. Like, and Robert's right there telling him, hey man, I'll knock your ass out too. Well, the dude stumbles to him and Robert kind of throws him. He, he hits his head on the, on the uh, little, you know, uh, concrete porch right there at the hotel. So he gets back up and he, and I sit him down on the porch. I'm like, Kurt, just chill, man. You're drunk. Just chill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let it go tonight, bro. We're going to get you to the bed. Just chill. Put Gave him a towel to dry off because the dude been dumping fucking water on him. Well, he I, I get him and I take him to his room. Get him up, take him to his room where he was sleeping. Laid him down in his sleeping bag. And that was the end of the night. Now, we had to go to work in like two hours, so... Lay down, barely fell asleep. Lauren goes off, get up, go to work. Well, on the way to work, I knock on their door like I always do and go to Continental Breakfast and eat breakfast. We go on to work. He never shows up. He doesn't show up. Robert Harvey doesn't show up. So, at 11 o'clock, they get a phone call. Hey, what's Kurt's last name? Ambulance at the hotel. Well, at that point, it got a little bit 
little nerve wracking. You know, I looked at I looked at my co defendant and he looked at me and I'm like, you know, <laughs> Oh man. What, that ain't what good. the fuck happened, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh now now we're scrambling mentally because we really don't know, You're you know like, what I'm saying? What the fuck's going on? Right. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. So anyways, we continue out the day. Uh get back to the hotel trying to find out what hospital this went when went to. We're calling the hospital, give them the dude's name. The hospital's like, no, nah, there's nobody here, there's nobody here, nobody here. Well, we finally we called EMS and found out what time they picked up. And um they picked the dude up at a certain time and they took him to a certain hospital. So we called that hospital and said, hey, a patient was delivered at a certain time. So they had him under a John Doe Jolly. They didn't even have an identification on him. Oh, wow. What had happened is that <laughs> we go to work and uh, I guess dude wakes up at like 9, 10 o'clock. And he like strips all of his clothes off, goes into the bathroom, strips all of his clothes off. And uh, he walks out the hotel and down the halls and he's beating on the door butt naked. He's not responding to any commands. So hotel calls EMS and sheriffs. Uh, before they get there, they co they coax him into an empty room, and he was laying on the bed, according to reports. Right. Um. So at that point, they take him to uh, Halifax. He wasn't responding. They take him to Halifax. They get him in the ambulance. They get him to tell him his name and where he's from. Um. So at that point, his his neural, you know, his brain is still you working know what I mean? a little a bit. little bit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He was able to tell him his name. But only his first name and where he was from, which he was from New York. Um, so uh, they take him in, and I guess they do a CAT scan on him. And you know, I don't, I, I know all this because of my discovery. I what sat there three and told, a half years, yeah. uh, and I read this thing like, uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, so they, hold on real quick, just so everybody knows that's watching this, a discovery is a. Uh, is a big file you get from your attorney and it tells you, you know, what's what who talked in your case, what statements were, what the cops say, what the medical examiner says. I just wanted everyone to know that so they know. What yeah, they can consist about. of this big and then they consist of this big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, depending yeah. on uh, you know, the charge and and what you got going on. But so they rush him into uh, emergency surgery. Uh, he had pressure on his brain. His blood pressure was out the roof or whatnot. So they rush him into uh, emergency surgery. They cut his piece of his skull open. They take the brain bleed. They found out he was bleeding. So they take the brain bleed off. They put a, a, tre a pressure transducer in uh, his skull and induced him into a, 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 a induced coma. And uh, he sat there and we went and seen him. Uh, all of us did. Everybody that worked with him went there. Uh, he was laid up in the bed. Um, you know, what I vividly remember was watching the pressure scale. Um, the doctor said that was what was real big right now. And I remember it jumping from 12 to 15. And then I remember one time it jumped to 17. So, I, I mean, so, it, yeah, I, I really, we didn't, still at that point, there's no reaction to, like, any criminal activity because... He could have fell... Well, it wasn't at that. At that point, it was just a fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking in my head at the time, I'm like, well, damn, dude, they, they have to have cameras here. So either way, you just tell them the truth, and that's what it is. You were defending yourself. It was yeah. a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And so I was like, we're at this hotel right here in Daytona. So right at this off. point, you're kind of just feeling bad for him. Right, right. I'm just feeling like, damn, yeah. it's, you know what I mean? It sucks. We're trying to, you know, tell him, Kurt, get better, you know, words of encouragement, whatever. His family's from out of town. We're from out of town. We're all from out of town. So there ain't no family. It's just us. Right, the workers. Yeah, so, you know, we hollered at him a few times. And, I mean, uh, everything was cool. Uh, we get back to the hotel that evening. And I'm like, damn, I'm telling my code defendant. I'm like, damn, don't, don't you think we should tell his family? You know what I'm saying? So, walk into the room and find uh, his phone. Well, when I opened up his phone to find his, 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 and this is no lie, man. This is exact truth in the case. Whether I was wrong at some point throughout this case, then I was wrong. But this is what happened. And if, you know, at that time, it just was my instinct to do. But when I grabbed his phone, this is my best friend we're talking about. I've grown up with this kid. 
So when I grab dude, so this is the dude's phone that's in the hospital. Yeah, I okay. grab his phone. I'm gonna text his family. family and let him know, hey, dude, fell and hit his head. Okay. He's in the hospital. Okay. But in doing so, I say, damn, I better delete the messages of them talking of shit. them talking yeah. shit to each other. I would have done the same thing. That's honestly. my friend. So yeah. I did that. I deleted all the me that whole message history out of that phone, and I did contact the first person I contacted out of that phone was the dude's brother. And because he had, I, I went to the same last name that the dude had, you know what I'm saying? And I found that same last name and I call him, I'm like, hey, you know, Kurt, da, 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 da. I said he fell and hit his head. He's in the hospital. They did emergency surgery. So he told me I should contact his wife. So I did, but they weren't together at the time. She had already moved on, had another guy, whatever. I contact her, let her know what's happening. She freaks out. She blows up everything and drives down here with her sister. Okay. So they get to him at the hospital. Dude's still alive. Everything's okay. Um, we're going to go meet him. Uh, so at the hospital? Yeah, okay. we're going to go meet him and tell him, you know, we got some of his shit at the, apart uh, at the uh, hotel. And so uh, that's what we did. And when we met him, you know, the, the one sister, she was kind of like upset. You know what I'm saying? And she she felt like supposedly she felt like she you know there there was something being not being said you know what i mean and there was at that time you know what i mean nobody was saying anything about this fight it was just you know he, he was drinking so she and, already had like the the like okay something's going on here type attitude yeah i mean but there was it, it really it was just her at that point i felt i don't know maybe the looks on our face gave it away or, or something yeah, i don't know you know what i mean yeah maybe the vibe was off yeah you know what i mean we didn't intend it for it to be off and didn't think that it was off at the time, but maybe it was and it triggered a thought that maybe, uh, hey, uh, something's oh, off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and she wasn't wrong. She wasn't wrong. She was dead on. You know, she wasn't getting the whole story. I mean, he did fall and hit his head, but the, the events leading up to it have been left out. You know what I mean? Right. right. He had drank that night. He did fall and hit his head. And that's pretty much what was being said at that point. Okay. Um... At that point, they came and got his stuff from the hotel, and they went to wherever they went. We went to work for one more day back with this company, and our company was starting a job in St. Pete, and we were from over on this side anyway, so and rather than pay for us to stay in a hotel, they needed masons over here on this job, so okay. they're going to send us back to this job. So that's what we did. We go over to this job, and... Um, the Sunday before we, the Sunday before we had to, that was on Friday that they told us we we're going to be working somewhere else. So I said, shit, I'm just going to stay in Daytona for until Sunday and then just join, join myself. And, you know, I had a friend of mine at the time that I was talking to um, that, that eventually become a big part of my life. But at that time, you know, we were friends. And so she came over and we hung out in Daytona that weekend and we had a great time. And, uh, so great, you know, and I was drinking Long Islands and I fell asleep on the beach and I had my legs, I had my bathing suit rolled up to the white part of my legs and I fell asleep, man. <laughs> and I woke up an hour, 30 minutes later, my legs were on fire. I just remember jumping up and just running straight to the water and diving in. And um, so anyways, we make it back to Tampa that Sunday night, or not Tampa, but to Pasco County that Sunday night. And... Um, Monday, I can't go to work. I text a picture of my legs to my boss. I'm like, listen, dude, I fell asleep in the sun. I can't even put no jeans on right now. So he's like, he laughed about it. He's like, no yeah. big deal. As soon as you can put them jeans on, call me and come to work. No problem. So my co-defendant was supposed to go that Monday. I think he did. I'm not sure. Um, but later on, later on that night, I guess the U.S. Marshals kicked his door in. Um, they kicked his door in, arrested him, laid everybody down. And uh, his brother was there. They thought I was. They thought his brother was me. Um, <clears throat> they laid him. They took him in. Just out of nowhere. Yeah, U.S. Marshals burst in. Boom! They arrested him for second degree murder. And then at that point, that's the first. You know, that's the first. You know, knowledge of that this guy didn't make it. Um, so how did you find out that they rushed him? So they they take him. Um, his brother calls me. <laughs> He's like, hey. Oh, uh, okay. He's like, hey, they just arrested Dave. I guess that guy died, and they're looking for you too. So, man, I'll never forget this call. <laughs> I bet you won't. <laughs> Shit. So, so they tell he tells me that, 
And I tell him, I said, nah, that can't be right. You, 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 he's like, man, I'm telling you. I was like, I, I didn't, I didn't want to believe it at that, mo at that, at right. that moment. You it know was what I'm reality saying? Reality, right in the face. So I knew my dad didn't live far from him. So I figured that if they rushed in there to get him, They'd that they, they might have went to my dad's looking for me. Right. So that's the first. That's the next call I made. Hey, dad, any police come there? Anything? Any, any kind of crazy? No, nothing. Okay. So there again, I'm thinking, man, maybe this kid's not understanding what's going on because I at that point I know I didn't touch this man yeah you know what I'm saying yeah yeah I know there's nothing there's nothing I know that they got cameras at this at this hotel I just know that in my head yeah at that point I don't know it for facts well you're assuming yeah we're in 2015 I mean we're in Daytona bike week Daytona 500 I'm thinking there's cameras everywhere yeah so I'm not even worried about even a little bit <laughs> I'm thinking something something's just confused right now and I really didn't even think they were looking for me. So the next day, I had an appointment in Tampa for a uh, for a uh, a car accident that my kids were in, and I didn't sleep that night. After that, I looked up. Oh, that's what happened. Later on that night, his brother texted me back. Hey, there's an article in the Daytona Beach News Journal. So I get on my phone and I go and I start reading it. And they're talking about the arrest that they just made of him. And I'm reading it at the at the end. It said it's a second suspect still at large, and they have my name there. And and then at, and at that point, at that point, I knew this shit was real. <laughs> yeah, dude. I knew it was real. I didn't know how real, but I knew this wasn't good. Yeah, it wasn't good at all. Nah, when the U.S. Marshals are looking for you. Well, right. I'm, when my name's in the paper for second degree murder, uh, you know, I don't know that that's that's a feeling that I wish anybody had to experience because that's that's one gut punch that that I never received ever in my life that I didn't at that point I didn't I, I didn't know what to do I didn't know where to go I didn't yeah. know I completely lost track of my senses I just it just completely consumed me like shock like I don't I don't I don't even know how to explain it it was just unbelievable so I paced all night I didn't go to sleep I had to go to Tampa. Did you talk to anyone in that time? Uh, my my kid's mom, my daughter's mom at the time. You know, we were we were talking to them. I had I had text my sister and let her know, um, sent her a copy of this uh, newspaper clipping. So, and as, as as much as I didn't want to, I, I had to text my dad because I didn't know what else to do. I mean, at that point in life, you know. You, you don't know what to do, you, you usually call your parent. Back, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You want to call your parent and look for that, just that, even if it's just a, a hint of guidance to reassure you on what you might be choosing to do. Right. <laughs> because at that point, you don't know what you, what you, you, I was so confused, I didn't know, you know? I can't imagine. Yeah. So I paced back and forth that whole night, and then we had the, the appointment in the morning. And that morning, I remember waking up and I'm looking out the window. And these apartment complexes were separated by a chain link fence. And I remember looking out the window and I seen this blue Silverado pull in with dark tinted windows. And so I'm already paranoid because I know my name's in the paper. I know something's not right. You yeah. know what I mean? So I see this blue Silverado pull in. Did back gut dropped? No, I just backed up. It didn't really draw my attention at that moment. It, it wasn't until after I realized, wow. That suspect, <laughs> right? That I knew that that was them. Yeah, because they back up and they and they go out of the apartment complex. Um, within 15 minutes, we were in the truck driving to Tampa. Um, I drive to Tampa. I put this rim hat on. I don't, you know what I mean. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing at that point. I mean, I'm still in shock. Yeah, you're in. Like I got my little mode. one. Yeah, I got my little one here next to me. My child's mother on the side of me. I'm driving to Tampa. I get to Tampa. We settle on this. We, we we settle for eight grand. Um, it was I don't, eight ten grand. It was right in between there. And I'm trying to ask the lawyer that we have representing us for this accident case. I'm trying to ask him questions. You know what I'm saying? Sounds something like I would do. You know what I'm like, saying? And so, reaching anywhere you can to get some hope. <laughs> yeah. At at that point, I made a decision that I was going to go to my sister's house. And I was gonna have her drop me off of my sisters because I didn't want them to rush in that house with the kids, with the kids and everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I made a decision to go to my sisters. I was like, you know, I'll have her drive me across and I'll turn myself in. I said because I, I, still at that point I'm thinking they ain't just ain't even they ain't seen these cameras yet. 
they don't have the film. Yeah. Something's off. You know what right, I'm saying? Yeah. They they gotta have this. Film. Or you're thinking I didn't freaking do anything. Well, yeah, that's that's you know what, what I mean? that's what I know. These cameras are gonna justify anything that I'm gonna say. Right, right. So that's what I'm. That's what I just know is, is there's an eye in the sky right there somewhere. I'm in Daytona. I just know there is. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm yeah, not even yeah. worried one bit. I'm like, there's just some miscommunication. Um, <clears throat> some something's off. And uh, I'll have my sister drive me over there, no big deal. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Okay. I'm trying to calm myself down because really I I know I'm not guilty because I never touched this man, never did anything. I am just know that they haven't seen the video yet. Right. So, I got you. Um, we get in the truck. At that point, I, I, I call my dad. I tell him what I was going to do. He told me he's out, he, he was at G G Gander Mountain. And I told him, all right, well, I'm going to come over there and I'll see you before I go to Barber's, before I have her drop me off at Barber's. And so I went there. And he wanted to go to lunch. And I was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I try, I'm trying to tell him exactly what happened. And my fucking mind is going a million miles an hour. And I don't know what's right. going on. I'm confused. And so I'm trying to explain to him exactly what happened in a short period of time and make it understandable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, make it all make sense. Right. Yeah. So, uh... <clears throat> he wanted to go to TGI Fridays. I'm like, nah, you know. And I remember all this detail for detail. I've sat in that county so much and thought about how this whole sequence went down. And I get, I, I tell him, nah, I'm not hungry. So I get back in the truck. I get back on Hillsboro. And I go to do the U-turn. I go to U-turn and I go back towards Memorial. And before I get to Memorial, right before I get, right before the bridge, the bridge on, on Tampa Road before it turns into Hillsboro, that a green Silverado does a U-turn, and it's behind me two cars. Now I seen this green, this I just seen this truck do a U-turn. I'm already alerted. All right. Then I noticed it's the same color that pulled in that your apartment. Yeah. So I put two and two together. And I'm like, I told her I was like, oh my god, they're behind, they're behind me, and they're two cars back, but they were in the same lane. And she's like, you're tripping, just stop. So I get to Memorial in Hillsboro at the light right there. <clears throat> and I'm in the lane, the last lane to go straight before, and there's a lane to make a right right here. That car's two cars back. I get over in the right hand lane to make a right real quick just to see if he comes. And bam, he came. And at that point, I knew it was over. Yeah. Damn, man. I knew it was over. I pulled into Ross, do a U turn. I came back up into Dunkin' Donuts, and I pulled in the parking lot, and they came in with a minivan, a Ford Focus, and that thing. They all jumped out, masked up. <clears throat> ARs, everything. Um,. I can't explain how everything just like completely just slowed down and I have my kid here and I'm just looking back and forth and it's just like, it was it was crazy. It's like <clears> a <throat> movie, man. What they depict on movies like that when people, I mean, that's that's real. So I get out, they rush me, um, put five knees in my back, put me on the ground, tell me, you know, you, you're going to prison, you never see light again. Just put shackles on me, sat me up on my tailgate. <clears throat> I love how they tell you what your sentence is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Told me I was never gonna see the light of day again. Started, uh, so you basically told her that you didn't want to talk anymore. Yeah, pretty much. It came to that conclusion, and uh, she told me, "Okay, uh, well, we're gonna, reach, well, we're gonna transfer you to uh, Volusia County, and you'll be booked in there, and and you'll hear from me soon," is what she said. And so uh, they took me to Orange Road Jail, broke me in, and four days later. Uh, I was on a, uh, I was in a car actually. They came and got me in a car and they took me back over to Volusia County. So when you, when you got booked into Orient Road and all this shit had just like happened, it, it's all here and it's happening, right? Like those first four nights there, man, like what, what was going through your head at that point? Knowing that, you know, they actually did just arrest you. In, in, in Orient, I was just like... Shock, dude! I was in shock. I was just I, I I tried to just sleep as much as possible. I was in complete uh, turmoil uh, mentally, and I just I just went to shut down mode, and I went to sleep, and I just yeah. you know what I'm saying. Uh, every time I was awake, I just wanted to get on the phone and just you know tell these people what happened, and um and. I pretty much told my family uh, that it is, is what I told told the detective. That this is a one-on-one -on -one fight. I don't know where they're getting their information from because at that point they had an arrest report. I was reading the arrest report, and the arrest report is saying me and my co-defendant kicked this guy in the head multiple times, 
Come to find out after this guy died that he went back to the hotel. Detectives did because the hospital ruled it a suspicious death. Uh, detective, they sent a detective out to the hotel. Um, our company had already sent us back to Tampa. Right. Uh, so there's only one person there uh, that was uh, um, with us that night, and, and, and it was Robert Harvey. And uh, so the police talked to him, and he completely freestyles the story. Makes up shit. He makes up. He 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 has some pieces that are accurate. accurate, and then he just starts freestyling to put them together, and so that's what they ran with. And I mean, he told the police that we kicked this dude multiple times in the head, and that he was yelling for us to stop, and we eventually stopped. And wow. these are exact words from wow. him that we eventually stopped. All right. Uh, so the police take that statement. They go to a judge, get a, a warrant for second degree murder. Um, come to find out when I get my discovery, which I got in black and white in this paperwork right here, and you can share it. Uh, the EMS, which was the first report on this whole case, is when EMS picked this man up from the hotel when he was wandering around. And in the EMS report, it says patient negative for head or facial injuries, patient negative for other injuries as well. So if the detective would have just took a little bit of time Right. to go and look at that EMS report, okay, and try to put a few things together before just taking a, a fabricated statement to, to to the judge and getting getting her to sign off on a warrant. Um, you know, this, this could have had a very, very different outcome um, because if a man was kicked in his head multiple times by two men and at the time I'm 240, I mean, you're gonna have some injuries. Yeah. I don't care yeah. how long after or, or, or how quick for that matter, um, a paramedic's gonna, you know what I mean, document some kind of injury. This right. guy didn't have one mark, okay? The only thing that was going on was his head was fractured from when he smacked the ground and his brain was swelling, he had bleeding, which at that point were camouflaged injuries because nobody knew. Yeah, you can't see it. Right, if, if I, believe me, if I knew his head was fractured that night, then, most certainly would have got him help. You know what I mean? I'm not that type of guy. I got a right. family. He's got a family. Right. I'm a hardworking dude, taxpaying, contributing member of society. I'm not a shit eater. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would have got somebody help if they needed it, Definitely. regardless of the situation. So, uh, I'm in the county. Uh, they transfer me. Uh, like I said, I'm in shock. I get, I get, I get to Volusia County. They book me in there. Um, they take me to a PBL block and, um, so real quick, if just for the, the people watching this, a PBL is a punishable by life. Um, that comes with certain charges, uh, like armed home invasions, first degree murder. Um, obviously what he was going through. Well, I guess that's you're good. You're good. I can just start that out. Right? You can start out yeah, yeah. back with what a PB, PBL, PBL yeah. is. Let me put this on the thing. <laughs> You're good. That's a that's a ringtone, buddy. <laughs> I like that ringtone. Yeah, that's my Taking old lady's ringtone back. for her daughter. <laughs> to the old school. All right. Let me uh, make sure this is on. Yeah. I already did it for oh, you. Okay. It wasn't. Yeah, I didn't think it was. <laughs> So, PBO. Yeah. So, real quick, uh, just for the people that are watching this and may not know, a PBL is a punishable by life. So, that comes with certain charges like armed home invasion, first degree murder, and obviously the case that, that he's dealing with. I just wanted to let them know that. Yeah. I, so, I mean, <laughs> to, to be honest with you, when you go to the county and you're in a PBL block, I mean, you're, you're with the worst of the worst. I mean, you know, because... <laughs> You know, there's a lot of people in the, in 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 those blocks that that are there because the state attorney fabricated the story and padded the evidence, and so they were able to charge them that high. You know, in the state of Florida, they're gonna charge you the highest they can charge you. Yeah. That way, they have leverage uh, in the Facts. end, and what whether the uh, whether the uh, story's accurate or not. Um, that way, in the end, you'll end up pleading. Um, and in my case, is 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 what worked for them as well, 
And it's not because I wanted to or because it was the right thing to do. It's because it was what I needed to do to get back to my kids in a, uh, in a timely manner that wasn't going to uh, be riskful and, and, and maybe uh, losing my life for 20 plus years. Because at the end of the day, if I would have took it to the door, like I know I could have, and I really felt strongly about my case, um, I'm still rolling the dice Absolutely. when they came to me with an offer with five years. I mean, so that that's pretty much how weak the case was at that point. You know what I'm saying? They have a coded defendant snitching on me. Um, they got fabricated witness statements. They got the medical examiner to cooperate with them, with their story. So their little narrative that they put together, you know, they chose me to, to, uh, to, to, to push it on, uh, being I'm the bigger guy, uh, I felt like they they could have convinced the jury yeah. um, beyond a reasonable doubt and, and had a, a, a lot greater chance to do it with me standing there, vice versa, my co-defendant, who's a, who's, who's a smaller man. So um, so when you were in there, when was the, the first time you ever heard like their first offer on what they were trying to do? All right. I, so I went to this PBL block and uh, I'm in there at this point, they had arrested him first. So he, he's in a, he's in a uh, block that's, you know, right across the hall. And, uh, so I get in there and, uh, you know, you, you notice right away, these people are talking in sign language and they're talking between the door and. They're communicating in that in that in that manner, and so automatically I just knew I had to learn this alphabet real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gotta learn this because I gotta be able to yeah. tell him, "Hey man, what's up, man? You need to tell these people what the deal is." Right, you know right. what I'm saying? You know I got kids out there. You my, you know you're my best friend since we were kids. I mean, you need to tell these people what's going on. And he kept telling me, "Just chill, chill. We're gonna get it figured out. Just relax." And being that that was my best friend. I was like, you know, at this point, what else can I do but just roll, roll with them, and 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 uh, and knowing that the truth's gonna come out at some point, right? You know and what I'm you saying? grew up with them, so I mean, it isn't like you guys have been together your whole life, pretty much. Uh, it's so disappointing that I misjudged this character yeah. after being around this person for so many years, not thinking that uh, that they 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 were capable of doing such such a crazy thing and, and knowing it's the wrong thing and still doing it when yeah. you know that person has a has a life and a family and, and you know what you did you're really not wrong and if you if you hold strong and we go to court and get up in that box and tell we these people do this we can tell these people what happened and you know we got one state attorney we got both of us yeah all right we should be able to get up there and tell these state attorney and tell the jurors and, and let everybody the judge, let everybody hear the facts in this case. And we'll be able to, you know, poke holes in, in, in the state's story. And, 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 and the detective work was, was horrible. I mean, when I finally started seeing some of my discovery as I was sitting in there, you know, <laughs> you go to read a police narrative report, you figure on a, on a murder case, it's going to be pages. Right. Well, how about it was only four lines? <laughs> what four lines you know i got all the paperwork here to show you i mean and and and, and the detective tells That's tells crazy. it in the, in the narrative that after a short investigation we came to the conclusion blah blah squad and and i'm going to share it with you that way your 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 listeners and your viewers can 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 see for themselves that so when you first saw this that a hack sheet, job were you like you had to think like this is all they got like i, I had to give you some hope at that time right <laughs> I mean, you would think that it would give you some yeah. hope, but I mean, at that point, man, you're still sitting in a PBL block with a second degree First murder charge, yeah. and yeah. you're just, you. I mean, I was in shock, dude, for a good six months. There's no, I was just like, I just, I couldn't accept it. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what was going on, and then it really hit me when he bonded out. You know, we were in there only six months together. He was only in there six months. What did give me a little bit of hope is that our lawyers, we both had private attorneys, our lawyers were able to get us a bond for a second degree murder charge, and that's pretty unheard of. Um, and it was only 75,000, um, which is relatively cheap considering. Yeah, definitely. So that gave me a little bit of hope, like, okay, the judge wouldn't even consider this. 
if the facts, I know she read, you know, over some of the reports and whatnot. Right. So I feel like if she felt like the facts were, you know, pretty disturbing that she wouldn't acknowledge this bond. Yeah, I would think that the same thing. So yeah. that gave me a little bit of hope um, to the fact that, all right, I knew she wouldn't release, even give us a chance to be released if, uh, mm -hmm. if, if the story was, you know, how it was being displayed in the beginning. Uh, with that report and the, the um, fabricated story. So his his uh, people bonded him out. Yeah, his people bonded him out. Uh, and my dad decided to uh, let me sit. And he didn't feel like it was feasible to bond me out. He, uh, you know, as you know, uh, it's a lot easier and you have more of a chance on fighting your case. Oh, 100. From the streets. 100. Vice versa, fighting your case In inside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm inside, and I and I just can't believe the fact that my dad's gonna, you know, let me fight for my life and not even give me a really a fighting chance. Is how yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, one. I'm like, just at least give me a fighting chance. That way, I can get out there and do some leg work and some ground work and help my attorney and and be able to present or call when I have an idea. You can't call when you're in prison. You got that idea that just ran through your, or when you're in jail and you got that idea that just yeah. ran through your mind. You can't just run to the phone and call your lawyer and be like, hey man, check this out. You gotta hope you remember that. <laughs> yeah. Hope you write it down yeah. because they go quick. When you're in there, you you got so much stuff going through your mind. Yeah, you'd just be laying in your bed thinking this shit. Right, and if I felt like if I was on the streets, I would have had a fighting chance. Um, and well, what what? So were you talking to your dad at that time? I mean, yeah. At that point, uh, I, I was basically only being able, being able to communicate with him and my uh, sister at the time, my older sister, and. Um, you know, it was a, it was a, it was, it was a mind, it was a mind trip. Uh, he would, he would give me false hopes of bonding, getting bonded out. He's like, oh, well, if you find somebody to uh, take the property in Georgia as collateral, then I'll bond you out. So boom, did that. That's right. But he didn't think I was going to be able to find a bondsman. Uh, that so would he take was okie doking you. Right. So when yeah. I found a bondsman to accept the property as collateral, because the property wasn't worth 75 it was only worth 35 you know what i'm saying right but i was able to find somebody to take it uh and so that once i got everything set up he backed out on me you know what i'm saying and uh Damn. yeah so he left me in there with with like get my hopes up and i'm getting excited and you're already in jail so like what are you trying to do to me right type shit? so yeah that's my stuff so he takes me uh he he, he 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 communicates he puts money on the phones um of course, man, it's it's it's, it's brutal mentally. Uh, the, the mental anguish that you that I had to deal with, trying to get, first trying to convince my father of the truth, and then him not believing me, and then kind of toying with me with you know ideas that maybe I would be able to get bonded out of if I could find a person to do this and do that. You know, not only was I already you know going through the most traumatic experience of my life at that point. Then I had him toying with me mentally, uh, which, which it, it scarred me, man. I mean, at that, that, that's that's when the beginning of the end was, you know. Yeah. I, I looking back on it now, I didn't know it at that point, but that was when the beginning of the end was with with the father son relationship that I had with my dad because I felt like my whole world was coming crashing down, and I just needed to have my back just a little bit by my dad and and. He left you out now. Yeah, right? I mean, he he did send me some commissary money, and I'm grateful for all that. But I did have a chance to to, to get out, and, and I believe that this case would have turned out differently. And I'm not, I'm not complaining. I did get a good deal and all that, but that's not. It, it wasn't justice because yeah, you're that, talking heart to heart with this stuff. Yeah, that's unjust justice. Even though I pled out and I took this time and I went and did this time, it's not because I did it. It's because I did the right thing for me and my family at that moment. Yeah, you were left with no choices, really. I mean, obviously, I, it was at the end of the day, it was my choice to take the deal or not. I could have went to trial, but I just couldn't risk the fact, I couldn't risk being away from my kids for any longer than I had to. When or they, that you already were. Right, like. right. And so, you know, that's the whole reason I even took the deal. But, 
Anyway, so I communicated back and forth with this dude multiple times and he would tell me just chill, you know what I mean? Everything's gonna work itself out. And so I took that, you know what I mean? I was my best friend. So I took that as, okay, this is what it is. And I accepted the fact that I was gonna be away from my kids and family at that moment. And that I was gonna fight through this with him and we would be exonerated in the end. Um, again, once I got arrested, I didn't know that homicide cases drag out three, four or five years, depending on, you know, the facts and the evidence in the case. <clears throat> So, I mean, that was just the beginning of a long road in the county jail. I mean, I sat in the county jail for three and a half years Damn. on a PBL block. And I don't know, you know, most people go to jail and bond out or they do 30 days or 60 yeah, days. Yeah, so you saw a flip like 200,000 <laughs> times. But to do three and a half years in the county around, I mean, the, the worst of the worst. Yeah. People that just have complete disregard of life and I mean don't get me wrong there's a lot of people that are wrongfully accused and, 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 and are forced to do things in the judicial system that you know they necessarily don't want to but they have to just for the the sake of themselves and 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 the situation at that time but so it's uh, with him saying that I just want like people to be clear because I know there's people that are watching this that are like I would never plead guilty to something I didn't do. And you would be surprised how many people do that. And why they do that is because they put a case on you, like in his case, a, like a first degree felony, let's say. They don't even need evidence. They can hold you on that until you prove yourself innocent. It is not, you know, innocent until proven guilty. You are guilty until you prove your innocence. Wow. And when... They go from a first degree felony that they're that you could get 30 years on, and then all of a sudden they come at you one day and say, Oh, we'll drop it to a third degree felony, but we want you to take five years. So now you went from 30 to five. And then they hit you right after that with, if you don't take this deal today, you're gonna come back. And when you come back and you go the to trial. Off the table. Yeah, and you lose, you're done data. And they're going to give you the max. Yeah, and you can so, say what you want. Yeah, you can say all that <laughs> shit. I done did all that. I said all that. Even when I was in the county leading up, as my case progressed, I said there was, there's no way I'll ever plead out to any of this. I'm taking it to the door all the way. And I really believed that, and I knew that I, that's what I was going to yeah. do. But after three and a half years of the this mental drain and just the beat down and just the weight of not seeing your family and not talking to your kids and... I was in a totally different side of this state, you know what I'm saying? So there was nobody to just come and visit me and they didn't have video visitation from your phone. So just just the complete mental breakdown of the three and a half years and when they came with that five year offer and I knew that if I signed it, I would only have to do 18 more months and I'd be home to my kids. Come on. <laughs> you better believe that's what I did. Yeah. And you know what? I sat in that county jail and I seen a man, they offered him five years and he only he already he already had three years in and he told me he came back oh they don't have anything they offered me this they ain't got nothing i'm taking it to the door and he took it to the door and he got 35. <laughs> so <laughs> i seen all this throughout the three and a half years i never seen anybody win trial not one time so i mean well Honestly, man, it sounds like we haven't even like tipped the iceberg with this one. No. Um, I know we got so much more to talk about. Um, if you want to hear what's coming up next, you just got to stay tuned and we'll get to find out exactly, you know, the corruption that happened in, in your case. Yeah, the judicial system is, is, is very corrupt and I got the black and white to prove it. Awesome. Dude. All right, man. So, hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. And you can even leave a comment down below on what would you do if you were facing 30 years and they came at you with five years. You can act gangster and say you wouldn't take wouldn't take it, but I promise you, you would. Let me know. I what promise you, you you're <laughs> gonna keep it real and take the deal. <laughs> Absolutely. And with that, it's DOC TV, and we're out.